black coffee, just like I like it, nice and hot. Oh, after, so rarely can I use a French press because I just don't have enough time. But this morning, I have a few extra minutes here. I'm gonna dive into your emails, reply to your emails from the weekend. Thank you for your patience if you've been waiting for an email reply from me. And who remembers the comment of the week? I believe is what I used to do here on the channel. I would give a shout out to the best comment in the previous uh, seven days. And this was back, I would say, when we had less than 10,000 subscribers on the channel. And it was a lot easier for me to sift through and look at the best comments and give a shout out to the person who gives, uh, you know, a really well thought out comment that uh, moves the conversation forward down below in the comment section. Well. I'm not, I'm not gonna commit to every day, but I'm gonna do my best to give a shout out to what I think is a, a funny comment, an interesting comment, a comment that yes, pushes the, the conversation forward from the previous day's vlog, which yesterday was all about the Nike ACG Gore-Tex Mountain Fly Carbon Fiber Plate Trail Training Shoe at 12.1 ounces. Thank you for commenting. The vlog has taken off because I titled the vlog, Do Not Buy This Running Shoe, because it's 12.1 ounces. It has a carbon fiber plate. It just, I, I personally think they were trying to pull off too much with that running shoe. Okay, so I'm gonna give a couple of quick shout outs here. Uh, let's see, let's see, where was what? Hawksun says, uh, there is a second life after this shoe gets retired. It can become a good Paperweight. Hoxton, you are exactly correct. And Shailene and Kurt Klein said, who needs ankle weights for training in the hills when you have this shoe? So a little, a little jab at Nike, like Nike, let's just try and figure this out a little bit. Let's drop the weight by two ounces, uh, if not more. And let's just uh, reduce the uh, need for so much Gore-Tex on top of the shoe. So there you go, a couple shout outs to some comments. Okay, emails first and then yes, um, emails first and then oh, I'm looking around because I'm looking at the piles and piles of books in our house. And yes, we're going to break down my running, uh, I almost said running shoe, my running book collection and give you some of my uh, reading material that I have used to help form my training philosophy. Time out, time out, time out. Okay, back, I'm sorry, we, we have to go here. Back to the Nike ACG Gore-Tex Mountain Fly. This email is coming in from a vlog fan, a picture of the bottom of this shoe, a $220 shoe. And this is why I warned you, but I did not expect this to happen. This gentleman, and I, I, I believe him because the shoe was just released. He says that he has 50 miles on this $220 shoe from Nike. And look at the outsole, okay? Here's a picture, boom, on your screen. I am, uh, and look at, I mean, the lugs are literally falling off. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but he says like he's put 50 miles on the shoe is all. Like that's not much at all. I don't know, that's just not good at all. And this is again, <laughs> back to a 220. So thank you to the gentleman who sent me this picture just to reinforce to everybody, use caution if you go ahead and buy the Nike ACG Gore-Tex Mountain Fly. What I am putting more into the hiking shoe category. man everybody you know you know how it is projects like this at the house always take longer than you think right so we have this bookshelf behind me and then we have two more across the living room there's no way i'll have enough time to get to those two as well that'll have to wait for another day but i did find all my running books in this bookshelf some of them were together in one section but a lot of them were scattered around so Here's the pile, as well as this pile. I'm gonna run you through, oh yeah, so my top five, uh, maybe top 10 running books will be listed down below in the description in case you're interested in picking them up. Okay, where to even begin? All right, I'll talk about my training books here in one second, but first of all, of course, have to give a shout out to, uh, okay, I'll start with, actually, you know what? I'm gonna start with a race 
like no other. It's all about the New York City Marathon. Obviously, so my mom is from New York. She was born and raised in New York. So I have a special place in my heart for New York, New York City. And so this book is by Liz Robbins. It'll be listed down below. It's just a really each, I believe it's broken down into 26 chapters and each chapter is highlighting different sections along the course and it interweaves into, I believe, the 2007 New York City Marathon. Anyway, a race like no other, there you go. Next book I'll mention real quick is The Paleo Diet for Athletes. I read that book in college at CU because I was getting injured so much and I was just trying to strategize how can I stay healthy. So anyway, The Paleo Diet for Athletes. I learned, I'm not recommending any diet, okay? You gotta listen to your own body and more, you know, maybe more importantly, you gotta listen to, um, I guess, like a, a nutritionist or your doctor or somebody else. Okay, I, I want to make that really clear, but I will say this book did because I had never read a book about nutrition before. So the paleo diet for athletes taught me a lot. Uh, I read The Perfect Mile in high school. Love that book. Just a great story about breaking the four minute mile back in that was it the 50s, I believe. Um, so the pa the perfect mile. Um, let's see, let's see. You know what? Okay, of course, I'm a Buffalo, but I will give a shout out to Bowerman and the Men of Oregon, written by Kenny Moore. And it's just, it's just a really good book about Bill Bowerman and you know, his, his time coaching at the University of Oregon, but also tying into the uh, connection with Phil Knight and starting Nike and all of that stuff. So anyway, Bowerman and the Men of Oregon. Let's see, let's see what else here. Hold on, let me just rotate these real quick. Um, okay, let me jump down here. Of course, Running with the Buffaloes, go bus. So that book, just in case you didn't know, I was really not plugged into the NCAA running scene in, in high school. I didn't even realize you could walk on to a cross country team in college until I read this book, Running with the Buffalo. So that book really opened my eyes to NCAA cross country and track. And so that's what I did. So I trained alone my freshman, freshman year of college and then walked on to the CU team my sophomore year in Boulder. And last but not least, let's pick one more. Um, let's see, let's see. Well, of course, the greatest all about Haile Geber Selassie, his story, the, Ethio the great Ethiopian runner. I just love his story, his family story of coming from absolutely really destitute situation in Ethiopia, rising up to become one of the greatest uh, long distance runners of all time and one of the greatest long distance runners from Ethiopia. Okay, moving on. So that's just, that's this a pile of books that will end up back on the shelf. Now, all the books that I'm always looking at uh, when I'm filling out my training log, okay? You know me, I'm a Lydiard uh, student and I really believe in the Lydiard training philosophy. I'm not gonna overview it right now, but uh, a couple of the, well, Running the Lydiard Way, this is an old school book, but if you just want the basic fundamentals of long distance running, I think this was originally written in the 60s, so a long, long time ago. Uh, but the basic fundamentals of aerobic development, building that aerobic engine, running the Lydiard way. Uh, also, if you wanna go way more deep, we're talking way more deep into the, uh, so, well, I'll just call it, I'll just show it to you, the Advanced Neuromuscular Exercise Physiology book. And this goes really in depth into your muscular system and how it works with the rest of your body. And then of course, Advanced Cardiovascular Exercise Physiology. I'm just gonna tell you right now, these books are well beyond my, uh, like they're way beyond me, but I do reference them at times when I am writing my training plan. And yes, when I'm prepping to talk with all of you, about uh, aerobic development in the studio when we do the live stream. So there you go for those two books. And then one more is The Science of Running. And I bought this book more for, uh, again, I studied history in college. I did not study biology or exercise physiology. Um, I'm more of a story guy. So, but this is The Science of Running and this is by Chris uh, Napier who has a PhD. And I bought this book more for learning more about the anatomy side of, and it's really user friendly, very like anybody could pick this book up and learn about the differences. Um, yeah, just a lot of, and it does have training plans in the back of this book, but I gotta say, I don't actually endorse the training plans. I've looked over them, but again, science of running, and I bought this to learn more about the anatomy of the human body, okay? And last but not least, a little local shout out to the Leadville Runner book. This is all about um, places to go for a run 
uh, around Leadville, Colorado. So if you're interested in running the Leadville 100 one day or just exploring the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado, I'd really recommend this book. Just a really beautifully put together running book um, here. Uh, who is the author? I think maybe Talbot is. I'll put it on the screen right now. Anyway, the Leadville Runners. So there you go, everybody. That's my running book library. I obviously can't go through all of them with you, but I will again link to maybe my top five or top 10 down below in the description. Okay, question of the day. What is your favorite running book of all time? Okay, let's do, let's go there. And what is your favorite running book from 2020? Okay, so two options there down below in the comments. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Oh man, good stuff. It's like, I just wish I had more time to read. You know what I mean? That's why I do audiobooks when I'm out running. Okay, we'll toss it to right here, right here. We'll toss it to, I think I've made an old vlog about running books a long time ago. We'll toss it to that one right there, right there, right there. Happy reading, everybody. All right, especially during these winter months. It's always good to get a good book and go for, and go read and go run and go read. All right, see beauty, work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.